Ring-a-ding-ding, class is in session, and students, we have a special guest with us today. Please welcome writer, performer, porn actor, Christopher Daniels. Hello, Christopher. Hi, how are you? I'm great, and of course, we have Matinga, as always. Hey, y'all, what up? Into the mic, please. Hey, y'all, what up? Okay. So we've got our fishbowl full of topics. I wanted to put your greasy porn paw in there and see what we come up with. Okay. We have porn exclamation point, legends, gay for pay, secrets of. So today it's all about porn. Porno, we love. Let's talk about legendary gay porn. I know, Matinga, you're a porn aficionado. I do love me some good porn. So what are some classic gay porns? Classic gay porns? Well, I happen to love... um, uh, Power Tool is a classic out there. Other Side of Aspen, mm. really, really great little porno. There's a certain quality to them. They're not, they're, maybe they have some technical faults to them. Maybe the lighting isn't great in all of the scenes. Maybe the boys aren't shaven down and, and all made up. Mm. But there's a certain quality to them that it, it has a, a, a late 70s, early 80s. There's a realness to it. Mm-hmm. Um, although in Other Side of Aspen, the boys are very, very pretty. But like, there's just something... Uh, something raunchier, something just sexier about it. Mm. What do you think about 70s porn? I love 70s porn. That's why I was so happy to do the Men in the Sand remake. I think it's hot. I think it's natural. I think the men are not roided out, you know, airbrushed, spray Mm -hmm. tan, you know, which I do all of. But I think there is, you know, something um, very beautiful about, you know, just a natural man. And um, the hair, the the body type, I think it's great. They're a bunch of dirty hippies. I know. I love it. The feathered hair. It's beautiful. One of my favorites, uh, um, Chad Douglas. Love Uber Top. Are, are, are they all named Uber Chad? Top. Are porn stars all named Chad? Chad Hunt, Chad Douglas. Yeah, I think that was a popular name for a while. Well, I think if you have a big dick, people, like, they'll take that Chad name because it harks back to Chad Douglas. I Maybe that's what Chad Hunt did. I don't know. I don't know if Chad Hunt is using his real name. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, who's the other one with the huge dick that's out now? There's, like, a oh really famous... Tim, Tim Kruger. Enormous penis. I don't know. I don't know him either. I don't know her. I don't know her. Sorry. Who is she? Is she in the ballroom? <laughs> so let's talk about rosebuds. Yeah. Hey, is there a big rosebud scene in the in the I porn industry? Uh, I don't know if it's a large rosebud scene, but that's like that's a thing now. But a large <laughs> rosebud could be a fierce scene. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So explain yeah. to the kids what is a rosebud. Oh God, I think I think. Yeah, I've you've covered this story. before. Yeah. We're talking about rosebud, yeah. and the rosebud is when uh, you are often in in the fisting community when your bottom, you know, you you plowed that yeah. hole. Shush, like, Mary. Like and when picnics. you when you plowed that hole like so like lovely knitting, that knitting circles, and uh, and uh, you you plowed that hole so lovely. Letter. And and they push that rosebud out, and I think that that's a new affectation because I've used to see so much porn that that you never never saw the rosebud, and now you have like these little like these queens that that's what they do is like so they have visceral. that enormous rosebud, and I gotta tell you once again, often it looks like a bramble of red roses or red cabbage, and or yeah, ground and they beef, or yeah. ground beef, and they push it out, and you're like, what? Chris, have you ever pushed out a rosebud on camera? On camera, no, I accidentally did one in real life? preparing for a scene because I over douched and all of a sudden Ooh. it was out and I was like, what like, the what? fuck is this? Were, can I get it back in? <laughs> I thought my bubble had fallen like, apart. <laughs> push it back in? No, it, it, you know, it's all about muscle control. It went right back in. Let's talk about gay for pay. Gay for pay, okay. So t- tell us about that, Chris. Um, that is when a guy who is straight will perform gay sexual acts on film for money. Mm-hmm. Or escorting, you know, either or, but we're talking about porn, so yeah, on film. Okay, and is there a lot of that, and how are people viewing and, that? And if it's not in politic, do you think these guys really are gay? Or are or are there some truly bisexual guys, or merely just some straight guys really doing it for the money? I think it's all three. I think um, there a lot. I think some of the guys are straight, but it's funny when a lot of guys who are gay for pay start, they're completely straight, but then a couple years later you check back and they're kind of bi. So you think that's, you know, I think if the they're case. bottoming, they're gay. Well, you can't honestly, fake that. Uh, bottoming is, I think, easier for them to fake because you don't have to get hard. So you just clean but, out your but, hole and you just like let them fuck you. But Viagra and you know, you know all that, that stuff only works. It works to an extent, but if you're not into the person you're fucking, all the Viagra, Caverjack, oh, yeah, all really? of it. Really? Mm, yeah, for some guys, I know a lot of gay for pay guys that I've done scenes with. Some of them are strict tops, and I know some of them are strict bottoms. So how are they to work with the gay for pays? There's not. I don't think. It's the same across the board. I have found I've had 
some really good chemistry with gay, some gay for pay guys, and others have been um, standoffish. Yeah, exhausting to work with because they'll they will do this, they won't do that. They don't want you to and do they have like there. titty porn on the side? Yeah, and, and you know you got to hear a girl being gang banged by twenty guys in the background because that's all they can have playing when they're fucking you. So that kind of stuff, it's kind of it makes for a long day. But it you know my first scene was with um, someone that's a very very well known gay for pay porn star and who Zeb Atlas. Oh, oh, he's a huge. Huge yeah, person. Huge muscle. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So, and that was my first scene, and I didn't realize that that would even be happening. And then I got there, and he's, you know, watching straight porn, and, you know, and I was kind of like, oh, I guess this is how it is in the industry. So, Did it give it an extra layer of hotness that he was no, straight? No, it gave it an extra layer of boredom. Really? Right. Well, right. You, there's no... There's no, no passion. connection. It's no just, passion. No. And so my first few scenes were with gay for pay guys, and I was constantly hearing, you know, straight porn in the background and constantly stopping every five minutes so they could check their phone to get off on some, you know, some chick. But that's not always the case. I think, you know, I have had some scenes with some guys that are truly bisexual that enjoy both, that mm -hmm. are just complete pigs, and they don't care where they're getting it, if it's from a pussy, from a guy. I also think that you can, you can tell when there's chemistry between two performers. You can tell when there's heat there and that's always hotter. You know, unless they're both really, really great performers and they're like just acting it mm -hmm. and that works just fine too. Mm -hmm. But like I can just tell like when there's like heat between two performers and that's more fun to watch. There's nothing more uninteresting than watching a guy getting fucked and the bottom is not hard. There's oh. there's just something sort of uninteresting about Sigmund it. And the sea because monster. you just know that like they're doing their grocery list in their head. But you mentioned something before and I actually have a question about it. You mentioned Cam and mm -hmm. I was wondering what is that which is the stuff you inject into the penis to make yeah. it erect correct I, yeah I believe it was probably I think maybe one of the first erectile dysfunction um, things that people were using before Viagra and it's pretty extreme it's something you know yeah. they like inject I you can't you can't actually sit down for 40 Wait, minutes what is it um, or it's... lay back because it could stop your heart um, maybe uh, for those patients that are all, a lot older, like not a lot of people can take it. I know not a lot of studios use it anymore, but I think it was quite common at one Does time. Does it come from cadavers? Um, I, no, but it's it it's is called cadaver jack. That yeah. is disgusting. Yeah, no, caver jack. Yeah, and or trimax. Caver jack, and there's also like a like a little pill that you can put into the yeah. head. Yeah, uh, I've never I've never seen yeah. that used, but I've, I've yeah. heard of it. Children, I hope you have learned something today, and uh, thank you for coming to homework, Miss uh, Honey over there. Prolapse. I mean, learn it. <laughs>